everybody. This is Dr. Tyler Evans from Arite Chiropractic. It's been a little while since I've done one of these things, but uh, a paper just came across my desk or a paper that I know of, and uh, I've, I've studied quite a bit in the past, and <clears throat> you know, it popped back up, and I really, really believe that um, every MS patient out there or, or neurologist that treats MS patients and diagnoses them uh, should know about this paper and know the implications of the information in this paper. Um, so I'll just rewind a little bit. Um, MS is multiple sclerosis. It is a disease of the, uh, uh, the nerves in the, uh, in the brain and in the spinal cord. And what happens, or at least what's been in the literature in the past traditionally has been understood, is that it is an autoimmune uh, problem where Hold on just a second. I will get my, my pictures um, where a nerve that looks something like this, and this may not be super visible, but I'm going to give it a try. Um, this is a healthy nerve here, right? And so these little um, myelin sheaths, they're little blankets that wrap around the nerve, and they are fat. They're made of fat. Um, and they're made of the good healthy fats and what they do is it, it's an insulator and it sends or helps the messages send faster down the nerve fiber um, so that the messages get from the brain to the body and then back from the body to the brain. But the problem with this disease is that in MS multiple, multiple sclerosis there are scler sclerotic lesions that form on the nerve tissue and they break it down and so it looks something like this right so here's your here's your healthy myelin sheath and here is your um you know it's your your unhealthy myelin sheath and the problem with that is uh is that it, it breaks down that myelin sheath so that the nerve signals aren't firing uh like they should and it is an auto or it's been described as an autoimmune disease where the uh, body actually goes in and creates uh, little attack bodies that attack the nerve and break it down. And, and it's been described as an idiopathic or unknown origin disease, where it's just fate has it that your body attacks itself. Well, I'm here to tell you that that may not be the case. And definitely in my 10 years in practice um, is not what I have seen. Uh, and come to understand about the disease. Uh, I do believe that it is an inflammatory problem, uh, but there are many ways that inflammation is created in the body. And so what, what we talk about in this paper um, is how trauma to the head and the neck may actually be the initi initiator of the problem. And I'll just go into this. I'll try to cover it quickly so I don't get too deep on the, on the science on it. But what this guy here, Dr. Ray Damadian, this guy, he is an amazing physicist, engineer, medical, medical doctor that back in the 60s and 70s developed the first MRI unit. And what's really cool about that is that you can now image, uh, you can image soft tissue rather than x-ray. So x-ray is hard tissue, that's bone, teeth, you know, things that are hard, soft tissue uh, nerves show up on MRI because they're they're cre they're created out of water. They're, they're they have water in them, and that's what shows up on M MRI are, are gradients and levels of, of different types of, of tissue that are made up of water. And so what we find is that in MS, uh, Dr. Ray Damadian's beautiful MRI machine, um, you can actually see the lesions of people that have MS. Well. Now, fast forward 30, 40 years, uh, Dr. Damadian developed a new machine, not only the recumbent MRI, so this is where you lay down. Recumbent means you recline, you lay down. Uh, he developed a new machine called the upright MRI. Now, why in the heck would he do that? Well, this is his, it's called Phonar, that's his company. Do a little pl uh, plug for them because they're amazing and everybody should get an, a Phonar MRI if they need one. Um, and, and the reason for that being, and this is why Dr. Damadian developed this technology, is because most of the time in life we're standing in gravity and we are upright when our problems happen. When we have trauma and then when we feel pain or when we feel the symptoms of whatever we've, we've undergone. 
And so he wanted to image it upright so that you could see the problems better. Now, uh, what, uh, what this kind of connects to with this paper is that a friend of ours, Dr. Scott Rosa, he is our mentor. We studied under him for three years in a postgraduate diplomate program. Uh, and Dr. Rosa became friends with Dr. Domadian and started using his MRI machine, his upright MRI machine, to view the upper cervical spine and the problems that exist before and after upper cervical corrections to the upper neck that are gentle, very specific, um, to C1 and C2 to balance the head back on straight so that the eyes are level and the, and the brain and the body connect. Now, how Dr. Domadian comes into this is he saw Dr. Rosa's work in his clinic with the imaging, and he saw the fantastic results Dr. Rosa was getting, and they noticed that uh, in certain patients that had whiplash trauma and MS, that they saw this really interesting connection that there was almost a really severe injury in the neck with patients that had MS. And I've seen it myself many years in practice, almost every time, and I'm sorry to say this, but I tend to be the only one that asks them, have you ha had a severe car accident, rollover car accident, a total to car at some point, severe car accident, or um, sports injuries in the past that have led to severe head and neck injuries. And almost every time, I honestly can't remember a time where an MS patient, which they come in quite often because we, spec you know, we specify in that type of brain health, um, they almost every time have a severe head and neck injury. And, and so he saw this connection, he wanted to do a paper, he wanted to see what would happen. Now they've developed many technologies out of this upright MRI technology, one, one in which they're able to take, basically it's a movie over time of your brain and the fluids moving inside of it. It's called Cine MRI. Um, now what they've done is they've studied that Cine MRI, they took eight patients, they randomly picked them, um, they, they took these eight patients that randomly came in, they took, uh, they, they, they had MS, they had a diagnosis of MS, they asked them a thorough history, that seven out of eight of them had severe head and neck trauma, so that was the first like, hey, maybe this is a problem, maybe we should look at this in the future. Um, and study this more because it's always been said traditionally that MS is just an auto autoimmune problem and we don't know where it comes from. So maybe there's a link there, maybe there's a connection. And then two, uh, they found that when the upper neck was out of alignment and when there were places in the brain that the fluid, the cerebrospinal fluid was getting backed up. So I'll pull up my CSF picture here. So this is called cerebrospinal fluid. Now CSF is what it, it does a few things. It does, well, let's talk three main things. So one, it's generated in the center of the brain in these little uh, uh, tissue cells here called the choroid plexus. They're the red tissue here and they generate and they, they kind of grow out, the, the fluid comes out of the center of the brain and it follows these arrows around and down and then back up and around the brain all the way out and then out through the venous system. Now, the, the jobs of the CSF are to bring nutrients to the brain, that they ba bathe the brain, brings nutrients to the brain. The other job is it takes metabolic waste away from the brain and dumps it out into the to the blood system, and and then it goes away through your through your other uh, you know metabolic waste reduction systems. Uh, and then the other thing is it supports your brain, right? And so it protects your brain. Um, so these are very very important pieces that CSF in the past has just been written off as, oh, it's fluid that's around the brain, we don't know really what it does. It has many important jobs. And studying the flow of that CSF has become a new topic that, that many doctors are looking at, you know, in the last few years. And so what we find is that with CSF, if it's getting stuck in certain places, it's not flowing well, that's a problem, okay? Now, um, what they found in this study was that in um, a vast majority of the patients, they had focal lesions with little, little uh, uh, white spots on their MRIs, 
on, on their MRI imaging, imaging, and they usually those those lesions were around the center of, of the brain where that t where that cerebrospinal fluid was being pumped out. And so what that was telling was that there was a, a backup in the pressure. So we have this this hammering effect of the the fluid coming out of the brain and then pounding into the tissue of the brain and believe it or not that's where the the lesions that that these people are getting diagnosed with ms are showing up now why would that happen and what did they see pre and post so in this study here they have a beautiful um, image here where they show pre and post adjustment now i'm going to try to describe this to you i hope it comes across uh, in this image, but you can see here, this is turbulence in the brain. And so this is before an upper cervical correction to C1, and this is post. This is after an upper cervical correction to C1. Now here, what we have are many peaks, high peaks, with much more yellow and red. And this picture here, this is, this is immediately after, immediately after. And there are much less peaks with less red and le less yellow immediately after. Now, Dr. Rosa and Dr. Demedian have gone on and, and seen many patients and studied many of these patients. And uh, what, what they've also seen is that uh, these lesions in the MS patients, they actually go down and some of them go away. Now, I'm not, not saying necessarily that this is the only thing that's causing it, because I know that diet and you know infl inflammation um, reduction in any way is going to help patients with MS. Uh, but what we talk about is that the upper cervical spine, so here is the base of your skull, here. It's a bucket. It holds your brain and it holds all the tissue above here in this little vault, okay? And your skull is a vault. It holds all the fluid and all the tissue of your brain. Now, the fluid has to get in and out out of one tiny hole right here. This guy, this is called your foramen magnum. What's right below it is C1. This is the most freely movable bone in the spine. And in head and neck traumas, it is the very first bone that gets locked out of position. And it locks out more than any other joint in the spine. So until someone goes in and does a specific upper cervical correction with imaging that's done properly, that joint isn't free. But what can happen is that joint will free up and that bone will move back into place and the tissue that gets pulled down into this hole when this bone is out of, when it's locked out of place, it's automatic, it's, uh, uh, it's freed up. And so the brain is allowed to float and the tissue or the fluid that flows around the tissue flows freely. So this is what they found in this study. And, you know, I'm definitely kind of collapsing two or three different studies into this, this paper, but this is kind of the, one of the key papers that, uh, that describes a lot of this. Another book, a book that you can get is called Craniocervical Syndrome and MRI by uh, Dr. Ray Damadian and uh, I forget the other guy's name, but you can look it up. Call us if you have questions. Um, again, uh, Tyler Evans, Arite Chiropractic. Uh, we, uh, we're here for you if you have questions. Anybody suffering with MS should know this information. Know that trauma can cause some of the problems that show up in multiple sclerosis, or at least in this paper, it was shown to do that. So if you have questions, please call us 603-380-9184. That's 603-380-9184. And I hope you, hope you guys have a great day. Talk soon. Bye-bye.